Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone for teaching us this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully let I came out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations. They may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Hey, Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem. I was shot with another video. <coughs> so I wanted to read through Jeremiah 30 uh, today in his lesson, man. And basically, Jeremiah 30, just like a lot of the chapters in the scriptures, is a rundown of everything that the Most High has done unto the Israelites, why he's done it unto the Israelites, what he's about to take them through, he's coming to save them. All, all, it, it's, it's just a run, uh, like a synopsis of what's about to happen in the earth, of what's ha what has happened unto the Israelites, you know? So we're going to start right here in Jeremiah 30 and 1, it says what? The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah saying, Thus speak, so thus speaketh the Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, <clears throat> saith Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And that's what's, hap that's what's happening, man. <laughs> this is what we see taking place in the earth right now. The Most High is turning back our captivity. He sent us, the, he sent us down the Holy Spirit through our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shai. And we're returning back unto who we, who we truly are, man. And why is that? It's because the Most High is preparing to save us from the lands that we have been scattered to to serve captivity. Why? For our transgressions. For us going off, we were put in this low state. We was put in this low condition. But now, the Most High is turning that back, man. And, he, and he's preparing to come to save us. Verse 4 goes on to say, says what? And these are the words that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. So this is concerning all 12 tribes, man. Not just the so-called Negroes. Not just the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans. But all 12 tribes, man. All of you so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans. This is what this is what is about to befall the entire house of the nation of Israel, man. Or the yeah, kind. Verse 5 says what? For thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. And that's exactly what time we're living in, man. A great time of terror is about to fall befall upon the planet Earth, man. A great time of judgment is about to be unleashed about to be unleashed by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. You see, ain't no peace coming to this place. See, our people have been deceived because they're trusting in Egypt and they're hoping that this place is going to continue on forever. But the thing is, this place is over with, man. This place is done. For us to go home and to receive the things the Most High has promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the land that the, 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 the land of our, uh, our greatest captivity, America, has to be destroyed, man. So there is no peace coming to this place. The Most High is about to throw America, Babylon the Great, into a great state of chaos and confusion, man. Death and destruction. You see? Verse 6 says what? Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. That's how bad it's going to be out here. That you're going to have men in such fear. You see? The most I was going to bring such fear. Uh, so great distress upon the men of the earth, uh, especially here in Babylon the Great, you Israelites, that is going to be as if you're giving a uh, birth, man. You're going to have, you're going to be so, so terrified. It's going to be as if you're having labor pains, man. That's how, that's how much fear the Most High is about to pour upon our people, man. You see, it says what? All faces shall be turned into pillars. That goes into the great fear, man. Great terror, great dread, because you people, hey, two thirds of our people, have no understanding of why these things are about to happen. They have no understanding of what is about to befall our nation, man. You see, so when it comes upon them, they have no heads, they have no defense, they have nothing to stand upon. They're gonna fold, man. Great fear, 
terror, dread, man, is about to be poured upon two thirds of the house of Israel to the point that where it's going to be like men are in in pain and labor, having labor pains, man. Verse seven says what? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. That's 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 the time we're entering into, man. And this is what we have to go through before we can go to the kingdom of heaven, man. A time, a, a, the, the, the greatest time our, our people have ever had to suffer through is right around the corner, man. The time of Jacob's trouble. And the only ones who are going to be saved out of it are those who have repented and believe upon Yahweh Shah, man. The one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. You see? Our faith in Yahweh Shah is going to allow us to escape this great time of peril, man. You see? Let's get a precept real quick. Let's get Daniel 12 and 1. What does it say? At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So the, the time that we're coming into is going to be such a time of, uh, of great death and destruction, man. It's going to be so bad that Michael, the archangel, is going to have to stand up and, to de and defend the remnant, man. We're going to need divine intervention to make it through these times we're about to enter into. You see? And once again, the only ones who are going to make it through are those who are found written in the book, man. The remnant of the nation of Israel, those who believe upon Yahweh Shah, man. That's how bad it's about to be out here. <laughs> it's about a great, a great time of trouble is, is fastly approaching, man. And that's why we're constantly telling our people to repent. Leave off from those wicked ways and return back into who you truly are, man. But they refuse to take heed. So they're going to be swept away during the time of Jacob's trouble, man. These are things that we must suffer through before we can go into the kingdom of heaven. You see? Right, let's get that real quick. That's uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 22. What does it say? Acts 14 and 22 says what? Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So through much tribulation, which is what? The time of Jacob's trouble. Should we, hey, the, 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 those who are serving you, how about Shemiah Shah? We already going through tribulation. We already catching hell, man. We're not comfortable in this place. You see? Constantly vexed in the spirit, man. That's a part of that tribulation. And guess what? That fire is going to be increased and enhanced the closer we get to the end, man. But we must go through it. This is the only way we can get to where we want to be. We have to go through Jacob's trouble, man. That's the only way. So back in Jeremiah 30 and uh, 8, it says what? <clears throat> For it shall come to pass in that day, said the Ahawah Bashim Yahweh Shah host, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. And burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Going into what? The most are taking us out of captivity, man. You see? So for us to, 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 to get to the kingdom of heaven, for us to be taken out of captivity, we have to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. You see? And it's going to end up, hey, we're going to eventually be taken out from under these oppressors that, that, that rule over us, man, which are these Edomites. That's what the Most High is about to do. You see? Because this is our last captivity, man. This is the last time we will have to ever suffer through all these things we suffer through, man. No more will the Most High ever carry us into captivity ever again, man. Because when Yahweh Shah returns, the Most High is going to allow us to be taken up into the heavens, given new bodies, and be put up under that second covenant, having the law, statutes, and commandments in our minds, so we will never sin or transgress against the Heavenly Father again. And if we don't sin or transgress against the Most High, He will have no reason to punish us, man. So we will never go into captivity again, man. This is it for us. As it tells you in Lamentation, Lamentation chapter 4, jump down to the bottom, verse 4, uh, 21, it says what? Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, talking about the Edomites, the so-called white race, right? That dwellest in the land of us, the cup also shall pass through unto thee, and thou shalt make... And thou shalt be drunken and make thyself naked. So the cup that we had to drink out of, you see, that cup of punishment and judgment from the Mosai, 
which included us going into captivity. The, the Edomites, the so-called white race, is about to drink up that cup, man. Verse 22 says what? The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. You hear that? So the Israelites will never go into captivity after we're taken from this captivity, man. This is the last time we will ever be in bondage, man. You see? And that's why we see the most high visiting our enemies, man, because he's preparing to take us from under this oppre uh, oppressor that rules over us, man. This is all the things that the most high is about to do. These are a, hey, and, and, and we're in the process of all this happening right now, man. Verse 9 says, What? And they shall serve you, Howa Bashimi, Howa Shah, their God, and David, their king. Who I will raise up unto them, meaning what? David, King David is returning back to his rightful, his rightful position, man. The position that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai gave unto him, being king in Israel. You see, he's going to return, man. Verse ten says what? Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar. And thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. And this is what the Most High is preparing to do. He's coming to take us out of captivity, man. He's, he's about to take us back to our land. Where we can be at rest, be quiet, and none shall make us afraid. Nobody's going to ever rule over us ever again, man. Nobody's going to ever oppress us ever again. This is what we're calling for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to do, man. This is what we're preaching. This is the gospel, man. This is the good news for the nation of Israel. You see? Verse 11 says what? For I am with thee, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh The Most High is with us, man. He ain't tell us to seek him for no reason. You see, he gave us this faith, this gift of faith so we can believe, so we can be saved, man. Jeremiah 30 and 11 says what? For I am with thee, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished, because we go, we have to go through hell. We have to go through Jacob's trouble. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, two thirds of the majority of our people, two thirds of our people, are going to be put to death, man. Because they, they refuse to repent, and they want to continue to walk in rebellion against Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But guess what? Walking in rebellion against the Most High leads to death, man. And that's what's coming upon two-thirds of the house of Israel. Two-thirds of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who refuse to repent, man. Verse 12 says what? <clears throat> For thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, thy bruise is uncurable, and thy wounds is grievous. Why is that? It's because our people want to walk in that constant state of rebellion. They don't want to be healed by the word. The word is what's healing us, man. You see how people cleave unto this place and it's making those wounds, you see, and those bruises worse, man. But those who are repenting and coming back to the Most High through Yahweh Shah, we are being healed, man. We are being healed through the Holy Spirit by way of this word, man. The Comforter. It's got us walking in the right way as best as we can walk in it. It's got us believing and trusting and having faith in the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. That's us being healed, man. But two-thirds of our people, they don't want to be healed. They want to continue to walk around in the state of, uh, of wickedness, man. Walking after the flesh. Not walking after the spirit. Verse 13 says what? There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. And why is that? Why, do, why, do, why does two-thirds have no healing medicines? Because they refuse the word, man. The word is that healing medicine, man. That, that The word is what's cleaning us but two thirds of our people don't want it this is why two thirds of our people are going to be put down man you see man, let's get let's get a couple on that one let's get Amos 9 and 10 it says what all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say the evil shall not overtake no prevent us and that's exactly the spirit that two thirds of our people are walking in man 
thinking that no judgment is coming upon them for their wickedness. But they're sadly mistaken, man. They're going to be destroyed. Let's get this one. Zechariah 13 and 8 says what? And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Hawa Bashimi Hawasha, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. You hear that? Two parts of our people, two thirds of our people are going to be cut off and die, man. Why? It's because they can they continue to walk in rebellion against Yahweh Bashimi Hawasha. And we know what the scriptures say about uh, rebellion, man. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And what is the what is the Bible? What is the most I say about a witch? You shall not suffer a witch to live, man. That's what's about to happen in two thirds: death, man, and destruction, famine, pegs, and pestilence upon you, man. If you don't repent, verse nine says what? And I will bring the third part through the fire, the remnant. You see that? And, and what's the fire we're about to go through? All the tribulation, all the hell that the Most High is about to unleash. That's the fire we have to go through. You see, but the most I say, he's going to bring us through that fire, man. And what does it say? And I will, and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. Why is this happening? So we can be purged of all of that dross that's in us, man. You see? So we can be found as that precious gold and silver in the sight of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Because this hell is going to make us cleave unto the most high even more, man. You see? This, this, this hell that we're about to go through is going to make us cry until you how about Shemiah Shai even more than we're already doing. That's what the most I wants to see. Us trusting in him and his only begotten son and no one else. And nothing else, man. It says what? They shall call on my name. There it is. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. You hear that? Letting you know that you need to know the names of the heavenly father and his only begotten son. Which And the names are what? The heavenly father's name is what? Yahweh. Yah. Ha wa, Yahweh, which means he exists, man. That, that which means he he is. The name of his his only begotten son, the one you English call Jesus Christ, his true name is what? Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah. Those are the names that we're saved through, man. That's who we're supposed to call on as Israelites, man. So the Most High says, "What they shall call on my name, and I will hear them." I will say it is my people, and they shall say, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is my God. And that's exactly what we're going to do, man. Cleave unto the Most High, knowing the understanding that we're not going to get through this time of Jacob's trouble without the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, man. You see? So, verse 13 says, What? There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. Because these heathen nations ain't fighting for you, man. Especially these damn Edomites. They want to see you destroyed, man. They don't want to see you return back to the understanding of being the Israelites. They want you to continue to stay in that complete state of darkness, man. Calling yourselves blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They want you to cleave unto those bullshit-ass cultures they've given unto our people, man. They're not trying to heal you. They're making you worse, man. But that's what two-thirds of our people trust in. Verse 14 says what? All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek not thee. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy... With the chastisement of a cruel one For the multitude of thine iniquity Because thy sins were increased And that's why the, the Most High punished our people, man That's why the Most High put us in this lowest state That we're in, uh, in right now Because of our transgressions, man Because of our sins Not wanting to follow the ways of the Most High But wanting to follow the ways of the heathen Is why we're in this position, man And that's why the Most High fought against us As if he was our enemy Verse 15 says what? Why criest thou, thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. There it is. Our people want to know why they're on the bottom, why they're going through what they're going through, why they're suffering the way they're suffering, is because we sinned against you. How about you? How shy, man? All the answers are in the book. This is what healed us, man. You see? This is, this is what heals us. Knowing and understanding these things and correcting our behavior by believing upon Yahweh and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. That's what's going to heal us, man. You see? Then it goes on to say in verse 16, Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, 
shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon them, all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So even though the most high allowed these heathen nations to rule over us and oppress us and put us into slavery, guess what? He's not for them. You see, by them, hey, that's how cold the most high is, man. Hey, by them having us in captivity, they condemn themselves, man. By them treating the way they treated us, they condemn themselves. And everyone that had us in captivity, they're going into captivity, man. That's what's written. That's the judgment coming upon all of our enemies. All of those who serve themselves of us, man. They're all going to pay. You see? Why is that? Because you have people always come up with the argument of, well, all, uh, well, all nations serve slavery at some point in time. But guess what? All nations are not the, na uh, the chosen people of the Lord. You see? The most I don't give a damn about you heathen nations. He only cares about the Israelites. And when you have the understanding that we are the apple of the Most High's eye, you see, that lets you know that you heathen are in trouble, man. As it is written. Zechariah 2 and 8 says what? For thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. You see that? Why? For he that touch of you. Touch of the apple of his eye. You see, that that's what we are to the Most High. We are the apple of the Most High's eye. We are the Most High's chosen people. You didn't just put <clears throat> some randoms into captivity, man. You enslaved the sons of God. You enslaved Yasha Allah. You enslaved Israel, man. And all of you heathen are going to pay for it as it is written. Verse 9 goes on to say, For behold, I will shake my hand upon them. And that's what the Most High is doing through his prophets right now. Telling you to fuck off. Telling you that you're going to pay for what you've done, man. And there's no, no way you can escape it. <laughs> Very, uh, Zechariah 2 and uh, 9 says what? For behold, I will make an end. For, for, for behold, I will shake my hand upon them. And they shall be a spoil to their servants. You hear that? And ye shall know that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah of hosts have sent me. So all of the nations that had us in captivity and slavery, they're going into slavery, man. As it is written. That's the only way they can pay. Another one, Revelation. 13 and verse 9, it says what? If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. We're, we're patiently suffering and waiting for the Most High to bring this to pass. And we know it's going to happen because the Most High is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If the Most High says something, best believe that he's going to do it, man. That includes putting you heathen nations into slavery for, for what you have done unto us. That's the true reparations, man. That's the true payback. That's the true vengeance. You see that? So going back to Jeremiah 30 and 16. For the, <clears throat> therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured And all thine adversaries every one of them shall go into captivity And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey And that's talking about all of you heathen nations man All of you have made merchandise of the nation of Israel man All of you, you, you have got All of you heathen nations have gotten fat Off of having the Israelites in captivity man See but the table is about to be flipped man You see the script is about to be flipped now we are going to rule over you in our kingdom, man, as it is written. Verse 17 says what? For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And that's what's, that, hey, that process is taking place right now. <clears throat> you see? The process of having our wounds healed is taking place right now because the Most High sent that Holy Spirit upon us through Yahweh Shah, man. And now we're returning back into the understanding of who we are. We're cleaving up to our heritage. Hey, we're fighting to receive our inheritance from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's us being healed, man. And when it's all said and done, Yahweh Shah is coming to save us, to take us up into the heavens, to change us, give us new bodies, and put the law, statutes, and commandments in us. Man. And that's us being fully healed, man. Never sinning ever again. You see? This is what's about to take place. It goes on to say in verse 17, because they call thee an outcast, saying this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. You see that? Verse 18. Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents. 
and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Verse 19. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. This is what the Most High has in store for his chosen people, man. Not for us to be in America forever. <laughs> the Most High has greater plans for us, man. As it tells you in Jeremiah, hey, the chapter before, right? Jeremiah 29, one of my favorites, man. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says what? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith Yahweh Bashimi Hawashah. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. And that's what the Most High is preparing to do for us, man. But you got two thirds of our people who are fighting against it. So since you're fighting against the will of the Heavenly Father, you are going, you are going to be destroyed. <coughs> because there's no room for sellout ass niggas, man. There's no room for those who are fighting against us receiving our inheritance. You have to be destroyed because, like I said, the Most High has greater plans for us, man. He has greater things in store for his nation, for his people. And that's what he's about to do for us in these times we're living in now, man. The Most High said he's going to glorify us and multiply us, man. Hey, going back to what he promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, that what, what? That, that their seed was going to be as the stars of heaven in multitude, man. As the sands of the sea. That's what the Most High has promised, and that's what he's bringing to pass, man. Verse 20 says what? <coughs> so like it. Jeremiah, 20, uh, Jeremiah 30 and 20 says what? Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. You see that? And it begins with who? The Edomites beginning with their elites, man. Hell, the elites of all the heathen nations. They are, the Most High is going to punish all of them, man. But you got our people fighting against it. Bro, this is the gospel. This is the good news that everyone that's ruled over us, they're going to pay once the Most High comes to save us, man. They're going to pay in the kingdom of heaven. We're finally going to be on, on top where the Most High always wanted us to be. That's the good news, man. No more struggling, man. No more death. No more wickedness among our people. That's the good news for the Israelites. You see? Going on, verse 21. And their nobles shall be of themselves. You see that? We're going to have a government in the earth, man. We're going to have dominion and sovereignty, man. The entire planet earth is about to be given into the hands of the Israelites. That's the expected end that the Most High is about to give us, man. Come on, man. It says what? Their nobles shall be of themselves, the 144,000. Those are the nobles of the... Uh, hey, Yahweh shot and the 144,000. Those are the nobles, man. You see? It says what? And their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, which is who? Yahweh shot Mashiach, man, our Lord and our Savior. The King of kings and Lord of lords, man. He's about to come back to the earth and rule in Israel forevermore. And Lord willing, we be a part of that number. We're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna be joint heirs and rulers with him in our kingdom, man. Where we a where where our culture is gonna be forwarded in the earth, man. Where the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is gonna be the law of the planet, man. And if you don't follow those righteous ways, you're gonna receive death, man. That's the type of power that the Most High is about to give unto His people here in the earth, man. This is why the Most High is destroying America. So this can be brought to pass. And it's going to come, man. It says what? And I will cause them to draw near. And I will cause him to draw near. Because he's our high priest in the heaven, right? And he shall approach unto me. Who? For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me? Save Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah, man. Our Lord and our Savior. The reason that we're able to do this, man. Is because of Yahweh Shah's sacrifice. The reason that we're going to be able to be bought upon that sacred covenant. To be bought into ever, everlasting life. God damn. To be bought. In, <clears throat> to be bought into everlasting life. To be bought into immortality. All that's made possible because of Yahweh Shah. <clears throat> damn. Verse 22 says what? And ye shall be my people. And I will be your power. What does that go into? The second covenant, man. 
which is made accessible because of who? Because of our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shah, man. Because of Yahweh Shah, we're going to be bought back fully unto the Most High. We're going to be tied fully unto the Most High because of Yahweh Shah, man. And let's get it because you go into the next chapter, Jeremiah 31. The Most High tells you about this covenant that he's going to make with the house of Israel, man. So this is Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, all 12 tribes, man. That's who the new covenant is for. It has nothing to do with you heathen nations. Verse 32 says what? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. But my covenant, or it's like, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And why do we break that first covenant? It's because we're in the flesh. We can't be perfect according to the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Now, we want to be. We want to uphold the righteous ways of the most high in perfection, but in this flesh, we can't do it. In captivity, we can't do it, man. That's why we need to be changed. That's why we need Yahweh Shah to come and change us so we can walk in perfection, man. That's why we need the second covenant. So we won't go off again. And that's what the Most High is about to fulfill in the remnant of his people first and foremost. Verse 33 goes on to say what? <laughs> but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. You hear that? That's what. This is what Yahweh Shah is coming to fill when he returns, man. He's going to come and gather his elect from the four winds of the earth, wherever they have been scattered to. He's going to take them up into heaven, give them new bodies, and put these laws, statutes, and commandments in our mind as the most I have spoken, man. You see? The laws, statutes, and commandments are going to be written in us. It's going to be a part of our DNA, man. And we're, and we're going to keep these laws, every law of the most High, we're going to keep it in perfection. And it's going to be like second nature, man. It's going to be like breathing or blinking, man. That's how it's going to come natural to do these things when the Most High brings us under that second covenant. Once again, which is only made possible through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice, man. So it goes on to say, and write it in their hearts, and they will be and will be their God, and they shall be my people. There it is. So every time you hear that, uh, 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 the Most High saying, he will be our God and we're going to be his people, that's him talking about us being brought up under that second covenant, man. That's the, that's the expected end that the Most High has for his people. You see, this is what's coming, man. This is what's about to be fulfilled as the Most High has promised. You see, so going back to Jeremiah 30 and 22, it says what? And ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Because he's talking about what? Us being brought up under that second covenant, being fully tied back unto him. Made possible through our mediator, our Lord and our Savior, our high priest in the heavens, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man. Verse 23 says what? Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah goeth forth with fury. A continual whirlwind, it shall fall, it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. And this is talking about Yahweh Shah's second covenant. This is talking about Yahweh Shah's second coming. Because he's coming with the clouds of heaven, man, as he's told you out of his own mouth. Let's get it real quick. <laughs> he's coming to visit the wicked. He's coming to visit you Edomites, man. Which are, hey, and you Edomites are the wicked according to the Bible. It goes on to say, matter of fact, let's go Matthew 24. And 30 says what? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's Yahweh shall returning with the so-called UFOs, man. And all people of the earth are going to mourn because what? They're going to think is an actual alien invasion. No, that's the second coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. Coming to punish those who are ruling over us, man. Beginning with the elites of Esau, Edom. You see? Yahweh Shah is coming to destroy, man. He's coming to destroy our enemies. He's coming to save us. Lord willing, we be a part of that number, man. Verse 31. Oh, it tells you right there. Verse 31. And he, sh he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. He's going to come and save the Israelites from wherever they have been scattered to. You see? That's the most I return in the captivity of Jacob's tents, man. 
All that's going to be fulfilled through Yahweh Shai, man. You see? Let's go on. I mean, go back. So Jeremiah 30 and 22, one more time. For, Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai go forth with fury. A continual whirlwind, it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Oh, let's get that real quick. That's Isaiah 63. <laughs> it says what? Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basel? Because Yahweh Shai is coming to visit you Edomites here in Babylon the Great, man. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Why? Because he's coming back with an armada of chariots, man. <laughs> you see? As Enoch prophesied, the Lord shall come with thousands, uh, uh, thousands of his uh, heavenly hosts, man. So it says what? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Yahweh Shah, because that's what his name means, man. He saves or he delivers. And who is he coming to deliver? Who is he coming to save? He's coming to save the remnant that believe upon him, man. Verse 2 says what? Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Verse 3. <clears throat> I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Why? Because he's coming to put to death a lot of you Edomites, man. Why? For what you have done unto the Israelites. Oh, because it goes on to say, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Why is, why is it, <clears throat> why is vengeance in his heart? first of what you've done unto him see going going all the way back to the time of the roman captivity man you brutally beat our lord man you nailed him, you nailed him to a fucking cross that's why vengeance is in his heart and also what you've been doing unto his people ever since that time man so yahweh shah is not coming back in a happy mood he's coming back to fuck shit up beginning with you edomites and all of you Coon ass sell out Israelites who are cleaving up to this damn enemy who's cleaving up to Esau Edom. Yahweh Shah is coming to put your ass to death too, man. You see? You fucking sellouts. Going back, <clears throat> verse 24 says, What? The fierce anger of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart. Because <clears throat> Yahweh Shah is coming to fulfill the will of the Most High Because just like he told you out of his own mouth His meat is to do the will of him that sent him, man And according to the Most High's will He's coming to destroy all of his enemies, man Including two-thirds of all wicked-ass people It says what? And, it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart In the latter days ye shall consider it and, and when it comes to pass And Lord, will come to pass You're going to know that a prophet has been a monkey, monkey And we've told you of these things, man We've told you what the will of the Heavenly Father is and what Yahweh Shah is coming to do. You see? You're going to consider it, man. You're going to consider it. You see? Hey, our captivity hey, is almost over, man. And our Lord is coming to save us. And he's coming to punish our enemies as it is written. Thus said Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shah Bahashem Rekak Wadash. A hey, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, and the sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully let I get out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abad, Babal.